Hey everyone, welcome back to the Multi-Location Marketing Show. Uh, my name is Elliot Olson and I am joined here with my co-host, Matt Nichols. Hello everyone. Happy 2023. <laughs> Happy 2023. Happy New Year. Uh, we're back at it again here with another episode. Uh, excited to bring something kind of new to you guys, um, what we're calling the digital carve-out method. And I'll let Matt kind of explain that. But uh, yeah, we're really excited to give you kind of some insight into organic visibility this episode and um, just how to how to move the needle this year in 2023 and uh, bring more leads to your locations and um, yeah, just sharpen your uh, marketing prowess. So Matt... Um, Let's start out by just, I would love to ask you, what is the car, digital carve out method and uh, you know, what's the purpose of it or why did you create it? Yeah, I would call it the digital ad carve out method to be a little bit more accurate. And the whole idea is marketers you know, that we work with on a regular basis, they're really always looking to maximize their marketing budget, right? And when you want to try new things and do things, there's always perceived risk in having to go and ask for new monies or to increase your budget and those types of things. And we came up with this concept working with you know several different clients uh, last year where we created a way where they could really improve their overall lead production at the local level without increasing their budget. And we thought, you know, this is a really cool concept because a lot of marketers, you know, they want to improve, they want to, you know, improve their marketing ROI, they want to improve their lead flow, they want to support uh, their local representatives, whether it's store locations or dealers or franchisees. But a lot of times, you know, it's difficult to go back and request, you know, new budget that you might not have. And so as you're planning out uh, what you're going to do from a marketing perspective this year, um, I think this will be a really interesting topic. And, and really the, the core concept behind it is that what we found is organic visibility um, generates leads at an incredibly efficient rate. Uh, we have some programs um, as high as 132nd the cost producing a lead organically than what we're seeing it costs doing it through uh, digital ads, right? And, you know, on the low end, you know, I would say it's uh, one in 10, you know, 10% uh, less cost, you know, but we've really seen those numbers become very impressive. And the great thing about organic is that it's, you know, it's very cost effective. So, what we're going to talk about today is how you can really maximize your organic visibility at the local level without increasing your ad spend and without having leads fall off. And uh, we'll kind of step through that. So the idea, the carve out is carving out a, a small piece of your digital ad budget to bolster your organic visibility at the local level, which produces leads at a much uh, greater uh, value and without without sacrificing um, visibility and uh, obviously your budget not having to, to improve those. So that's what we're going to kind of cover today. Nice. Um, so I guess a good place to start with this would be just um, obviously you want to be data driven. So you want your, you want your marketing uh, to be influenced by uh, just an understanding of what opportunities out there and, you know, how much that opportunity costs. And so, how would you say, where, like, where would a marketer begin in terms of uh, measuring the opportunity, the organic opportunity that's available uh, to them? That's a great question. About that? Yeah, I mean, I, I always recommend that's where you start because to be honest, I mean, a lot of people, they're, they're running a big marketing program. They've got a lot of moving parts and they hire an SEO company or they might be doing some SEO work internally and they think they've got that box checked off and, hey, we're doing that. But they've never really taken a step back to really assess, you know, how much of the organic opportunity in my local markets am I really capturing right now? And so obviously, if you were capturing 100% of it, this conversation would be irrelevant, although you would be the first I've ever seen to be doing that. So uh, kudos to you if you're, if you're really crushing it. But even people that think they're doing really well and that are doing decently, there's, uh, you know, usually... 
I see anywhere from 30 to 50% of the organic opportunity being captured and once they really do an assessment. And so uh, the idea is if you're only capturing half the opportunity and there's another half that you could be gaining at the numbers that we were talking about, you know, anywhere from one uh, tenth to one thirty second less cost, you know, most marketers would say, yeah, I mean, if I could spend my money and get 10 times the results for it, I would rather be doing that. But organic tends to be somewhat mysterious. How do you do it? There's a lot of dissenting Overwhelming. opinions out there and those types of things. So really the place to start is to do uh, an assessment in each of your local markets. And just like you would for a national program, what we typically recommend people do is you go in for each one of your local markets. So let's say you're in Indianapolis, Indiana as a market of yours, or Austin, Texas, or Sacramento, California, right? And what you do is you pretend like you're a consumer in that local market. You do, I usually recommend to define, you know, somewhere between your top 25 and 50 uh, keywords that are important. So obviously if you're an HVAC service company, you know, you're going to want to be found for things like AC repair, furnace repair, AC replacement, um, air conditioning service, you know, all those different types of things you do. If you do plumbing, if you do duct cleaning, um, you want to really be comprehensive in those services. Why? Because if consumers in uh, Sacramento, California are looking for those services, when you search as though you're from, you're searching from that local market, you're going to see how you come up when people are looking for that. And we, we know all the stats. I think it's like 95% or so plus or minus of online engagement start with a search. And so that's where consumers are going when they're looking for a provider. And if you're not there in that the top half of page one, in essence, you know, you're invisible. So the key is to really define those things and then do searches for things like you know, we talked about AC repair, AC repair near me, AC repair Sacramento. There are different ways that people search for those things, and those all get different search results. So I think with each of those keywords, searching from the local market, searching, you know, from those, at least those three variations, and then also consider the uh, sec- what we call secondary markets around. So any big market's going to have suburbs. They might have alternate geographical terms. Uh, so if I use Indianapolis as an example, there are big suburbs like Carmel and Noblesville. And if you service all of those from your location, those are important search terms to be found for because people are looking for those. And that also constitutes that organic opportunity for you, right? You might also search for central Indiana or the the county, you know, some places refer to themselves as like the tri-state area or, um, you know, various things. So so you have to just be aware in that local market. And when you kind of combine all those things together, that really gives you a picture of that holistic organic opportunity. And we're also not just talking about uh, Google Locals, the Google Map Pack, which is very important. But we find across our programs that the the traditional organic listings under the map pack also account for, you know, at least half the opportunity. Um, In our data, we see about 50% of leads coming from the organic listings versus the the map pack and the Google local listings and about 70% of the traffic. So there are a lot of searches that won't even trigger a map pack. You know, obviously, your really high conversionary terms are going to. But those things are all things you need to bring into consideration. And some people just kind of skip past that and go to the organic, uh, the traditional organic results. So you want to, when you're doing your data analysis, make note of what things you're ranking for in the map pack versus what things you're ranking for organically. And we also find that those traditional organic listings, they have a much broader reach because the map pack listings are so focused on proximity to your physical location. So if you think about it like an antenna, as you move further and further away from your actual physical proximity, you know, that signal gets weaker and weaker, and then different competitors are going to be placing in those spots. And there's only three of them, uh, the way Google is doing the search result pages now. And so it's really important, you know, and as you improve your overall organic visibility, then, um, 
that signal strength grows as well. And, and you tend to do better further away from your location in the map pack as well. So all things to consider. We have actually a podcast that we've done about that that goes into real detail on how to do that. We also offer free assessments for um, multi-location businesses that are looking to, to figure that out because there is you know, some tricks to the trade. You've got to have some tech that you can search that tells Google I'm searching from this actual uh, geographic location and kind of spoofs it so that you get the results that somebody would see in that local market. So those things are, are all really important uh, to really assess how you're doing. And then, you know, you look at those rankings and obviously, you know, another thing to really understand is that if you're the number one overall uh, rank uh, company for that keyword, you're getting about 35% plus or minus depending on the industry. Um, of the clicks. If you're in the second position, you know, you're getting somewhere around, you know, 18%, 20%. Third, you might be in that 10 to 12. And then as you go down, it just keeps going down the page. So obviously, if you think about it, if your average ranking is, even if you're doing really well and your average ranking is three, you still have double, you know, uh, more than double that you can gain, triple by moving you know, up into that number one position. So there's always a lot of opportunity. And then you add on the secondary markets, other keywords and phrases, different uh, phraseologies that people can use, you know, and you start to kind of get a, a full picture of the total organic opportunity and how uh, you're currently doing and where there's room for growth. Yeah, I mean, we have some clients that have a digital ad, <laughs> then they're in the map pack, and then they have like two links. <laughs> so you're seeing, you're, you're seeing them like five times on page one. Yeah. We and call that like share a voice. So obviously the more, if you're a consumer and you're going there and you see a company all over the place and different searches you're doing, it just builds trust and credibility because Google's saying, Hey, this is a trusted business. And consumers really understand the difference between an ad and an organic listing and that the organic is earned and studies show that it's far more trusted to be an organic, but you know, when you build that perfect storm and you're everywhere and you're in all these different locations and even getting multiple listings on page one, you're pushing competitors off that page and down the page and you're giving yourself more opportunities to be viewed and clicked on. And, you know, together when you build that kind of scenario, you really start to dominate and just see your lead growth, you know, take off like a rocket ship. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Um, so you're, you've kind of bled into this next, my next question, but you know, once you've kind of established the opportunity that's available to you, um, how do you begin to improve, um, you know, your organic visibility, how do you begin to rank for more, a wider range of those keywords that, you know, your prospective customers are using to search for you uh, when they look for the services that you're offering? Yeah, that's a great question. And, you know, a lot of companies are doing a really good job. We, we developed a, an ebook called um, the local SEO maturity curve that really kind of outlines the stages companies typically go through in terms of building a more mature program. And usually they start out with, you know, being found for, you know, a handful of keywords that are really important to them and the main geography that they're targeting. But then as you grow to really hit that next level and, and it, most businesses are doing that through location pages on like a corporate website, for example. But remember, you have like one page in a, a big corporate site of hundreds, if not thousands of pages. You don't look very uh, relevant to that local market because you're only a small percentage of, you know, the total pages there. So what we found is if you develop more of an independent web presence at the local level where you can get content. And really content is king, right? So obviously you want to do all the SEO best practices, you know, making sure your pages are optimized for the keywords and the topics that you're talking about. Having all the right metadata and, and page structure so Google can crawl that. And most people have done a decent job at that. Um, but uh, where, and, and then, you know, business listings and, and reviews, getting those things in line. A lot of companies are doing a decent job on that as they move down that maturity curve. And that really helps. But kind of the thing that we see kind of pushes people to that next level 
and getting from that, you know, capturing that 30 to 40 percent of the opportunity and really getting up into the 70, 80, 90 percent of the opportunity is content. And so if you go and you talk to Google and you say uh, you read what they publish or, you know, you, if you're connected in the industry, content is the number one most important thing. And when you make that content really relevant to the local market, unique, high quality and frequent, you know, then what Google is indexing, they start to see all this content about those HVAC services in context of the local market. So rather it being just general and you're competing with a national audience, you know, if you think about how many HVAC companies there are across the country, you're trying to compete with these general terms talking about HVAC versus when I dial into San Francisco or Indianapolis or Austin, now I've narrowed where I'm competing just to that market. And so if I look really relevant to Google and I've got a high degree or a high volume of content, both in that local web presence, whether that's on a subdomain, a subdirectory or a standalone domain, Google starts to see that and go, wow, this company is really relevant to this service in this market. And they're trying to serve up because they know their customer, they're looking for a service in the market. If you're you know, in Sacramento and you're searching for HVAC services, Google knows you want a local company. And so they're gonna serve you up those companies. And that's why you see local single location businesses doing really well and competing against the big national aggregators or national brands at the local level because they look a lot more relevant, even though they have a lot less domain authority and, and some of those types of things, they look very relevant because they've got a high degree of content all about those services in context of that local market. So we found that to be really the, the magic bullet is starting to develop that content. Now, obviously that, when a lot of marketers hear that, they automatically go, whoa, <laughs> that's going to take, you know, an Man, army. I'm already of like swamped. Yeah. I'm literally already swamped. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and, they're, and they're not and wrong. So, so what you really need to do is you need to have a plan, a strategy with, um, that can really repurpose the content assets you already have. So most brands that we work with, they're doing a lot of these things, but they're doing it kind of at the national level with their blogging. They've got great web content. They've got good graphical assets, good branding. And so the, the really the trick is how do you take all those great things that you've developed and make them locally relevant in each market? And you need some good technology to do that. And that's what we do at Market Snare um, is we really have developed systems to take the things that you already have in existence and build them out so that makes that content unique and localized to the market at scale. So you can do that very efficiently without having to add headcount or have all these writers. And so there's a lot of really cool stuff that you can do there. Obviously there's some other ways you can try to approach it, having your local people, you know, contribute to that. There are problems with that. Obviously it's like uh, most of the time, like herding cats, <laughs> to do that, or you know, you can try to do that centrally. But what we found is, you know, to really do a great job at it, you really need some supporting technology to be able to do that. And there are ways uh, to do that now that can be very efficient, and very cost effective. And when right you on. start to do that and do it on a regular basis, you just start to see the number of keywords that you're found for those geography, those sub geographies. And your rankings just go through the roof. And obviously, when you're in front of more and more and more people, more and more people have an opportunity to click through. You're higher up on the page. You know the the numbers show that you're going to get you know more click through rate on your listings, and that means more people seeing you, connecting with you, and then you have a chance to tell them about your service or product in, in a local context and generate a lead from that. Yeah, and I. You know, it's important to reiterate the norm. The norm that we see is maybe a landing page at best about or a location page at best, which you need. So it's not uh, it's not wrong to have that. But when we see companies move from that and add a local web presence, it's all about that location. Yeah, and so it yeah, that's, that's a good point. Improves results. Yeah, <laughs> it's that's, like, a, that's, that's, a <laughs> that's a good point because a lot of people think 
you're just kind of cannibalizing traffic from here and moving it to local when you do local. But in fact, the opposite is true. They really work well together. And what we see is a lot of times that location page doing better, you know, and you have to have that, but then that local uh, presence also getting a spot, you know, at the top of the search results. And, you know, and that's where we see multiple listings, um, you know, again, pushing down your competition and giving you more bites at the apple. And when those things are working together in unison, it really um, just does wonders for your overall, you know, organic traffic and visibility and lead generation. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I'm like, I'm sure there's some people who are listening to this. They're like a location page, man, it's like ridiculously difficult to, <clears throat> you know, it's ridiculously difficult to even manage location pages, things like duplicate content. And that's why when I look around, that's why I see everybody else doing. And I hear horror stories maybe about people trying to do something like local websites for each location. And so that's why it's important to remember that, now there's technology that can help you do that, that can help you scale and do best practices, um, you know, at every location. And so um, don't feel limited based on maybe what you've seen or your experience. We're here to, to, to lighten the load for you and share, share what's possible. So um, I, I, know, I know the next question, a lot of times it's, a, it's another piece of this process, but it's difficult to understand. And, and this is kind of where that carve out method comes in into play, which is really, you know, how, how do I manage my resources around this to make this possible? How, how is this, uh, you know, how do I pay for this? Um, and I just kind of wanted to hear, you know, how, how, you, how, how would one do that, Matt? <laughs> when they're considering, you know, putting more, what would seem like more effort or more, you know, more out there? Um, no, that's a great question. And everyone has to ask that, right? So it's like, oh, this sounds great. I'd love to get more organic visibility, but you know, what am I going to do? Hire an army of writers? That's going to cost a fortune. It's going to take a ton of time. What if it doesn't work? I'm holding the bag. You know, do we have the expertise internally to do this? Um, am I going to hire another agency? Yeah, Who's for gonna, sure. Like, offset this for me because I literally just I, I need somebody who can just handle everything. I don't want to do any of that. And I, but I also know that's super expensive. Yeah, for sure. Well, and, you know, if you're doing a big national SEO program for a national brand, I mean, a lot of times you're paying in the tens of thousands of dollars a month to manage that. Um, at the local level, you know, so, for example, if you had your um, individual locations hire their own uh, local SEO firm. You know, the national averages on an SEO program range from anywhere from 2,500 to 5,000 a month to run a local SEO program because it is a lot of work. And what we found is that, you know, you're, you're somewhat uh, reinventing the wheel in every location. You're going to get a mixed bag. And so companies don't want to, to really do that. And so what we've tried to do at Market Snare is really build economies of scale by leveraging the existing you know, content and marketing assets that you have at the national level, and then using technology to scale that, to do the localization, to make it unique, and then manage it in a turnkey way where you don't have more work on your plate. But you still have the challenge of, a, you know, there is some additional expense. And what we try to do is keep that down to, you know, a few hundred dollars per location where you can really see the value of that. And then you have the issue of, you know, well, still, I mean, you, if you have quite a few locations, you know, that can still add up and, and be, you know, an expense that you have to add to your bottom line. You have to go get more money. You have to increase your budget. You know, that a lot of times, you know, budgets are planned on an annual cycle. So you have to wait, you know, to your next budget renew. You have to convince people to do that added spend. You've got to convince your locations that that's, you know, a great use of, of your funds. And so what we've uh, developed is what we call the digital ad carve out method. And what we found is most um, multi-location businesses have some level of digital ad spend they're doing at the local level. Um, maybe they're doing things with direct mail or uh, print advertising or other things that don't have as high of a return um, as the organics, uh, um, channels that, that we're talking about. And so what, how we try to think about this is if you take, let's just use a nice round number, say you're spending a thousand dollars a month at a location for, um, your digital ad campaigns. 
and they're producing results, you probably know what your numbers are, you know, um, what you're getting, what your cost per click is, how many uh, site visitors takes to get a lead, what those leads are converting into new business. And a good way to think about this is if you, this is what we call the carve out, carving out a small percentage of that budget, let's say anywhere from 10 to 30%, maybe of your local digital ad budget that you may be spending on uh, at each location and using that to put in place a program to really bolster that organic visibility. And so let's say, for example, you know, in, in what we were talking about before, we're able to produce leads at the low end uh, at 10% of the cost, you know, of driving that lead through digital ads. So let's say you're spending a thousand dollars on digital ads, you're you're getting leads and they're costing you fifty dollars a lead, for example. We could generate that same lead organically for at the low end or yeah for five dollars a lead. So it does take a little bit of time for organic to ramp up and start producing. Usually we see somewhere in that 60 to 90 day range it's going to take once those uh, you've implemented that program and they're live to start really producing at the level that those ads were. Um, but what you see is with organic, you know, your cost stays the same. And, and over time, as you continue to do content and you continue to um, implement these strategies, your, your, your traffic, your organic traffic just keeps climbing and climbing. And, and we generally see, you know, anywhere from 100 to 300% growth in that first six to 12 months. And then we see high double digit um, or even triple digit gains, you know, a lot of times five, six, seven consecutive years after the fact. And because your cost stays the same, the cost per lead from your organic program continues to go down, 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 down. And so what happens is as you make that shift and you start, you know, you realize, hey, there's another 50% of organic opportunity. And now I've taken some of my budget that I was spending in ads and I've shifted it over as that ramps up, you know, it's going to produce exponentially more leads than the same dollar amount that you were spending on the digital ads. And it's going to keep growing and growing and growing over time. So in that first year, you're going to see a huge ROI on shifting that spend. And, and generally I would say, you know, in the first three to four months, you're going to get a positive ROI on that. And then it's just going to keep growing and growing. So the idea is now you're not spending any additional dollars at all. You're just taking, you know, you've done the research, you see what the opportunity is. You've looked at, you've got a strategy and a plan to put that in place. And now you're, you're just carving out part of the budget in a less efficient channel and you're putting it towards the organic and that's growing and growing and growing and you're maximizing that channel that produces you know the highest quality highest value you know source of leads while you're still covering your bases with your organic and or with your paid and now your paid can be leveraged a little bit more strategically maybe a little bit more focus on um, you know, people searching for competitors or um, filling in the gaps where your organic isn't as, as strong yet as it's building up. And you really use those things, you know, kind of in conjunction to really maximize, you know, those ad dollars in your overall marketing budget. And what we found is when you do that, you know, you're going to see just massive gains in your overall leads while significantly lowering your cost per lead. And, and what I call owning your visibility instead of renting it, you know, like renting it through paid ads where, you know, your budget runs out, all of a sudden you're off, right? You're getting no visibility where organically, every time someone searches, you're there, you're getting an at bat, you're getting an opportunity to connect with that consumer who is specifically looking for the things you're doing. And, and that's where we see, you know, this method really working to help you implement these strategies without spending additional budget and really maximizing that marketing ROI. Yeah, it really, it kind of almost takes a mindset shift because if you're in, if you've been a multi-location marketer for a while and you're used to your go-to strategies around digital ads, you know, it makes sense because it's in some ways a lot simpler and it's immediate and you can measure it very quickly. Uh, 
you know, you put your money in and it shoots leads out, <laughs> you know? Oh, yeah. um, so by, by all means, it makes sense that you, you, you know, that would be a staple in your arsenal of marketing, you know, prowess or whatever, um, or strategy. However, everybody else is doing that too. So, you know, if you can, if you can start to wrap your mind around, you know, the different, the different, um, you know, I've heard you say, Matt, sometimes it's like digital ads are like jet fuel. Um, SEO is like a train. Once you get up and moving, you know, it's difficult to, I mean, you're going to get a lot more leads and they're going to be more consistent. Um, yeah, I mean, cost, send but also right. trains hard to stop. So <laughs> yeah. if you get, if you, if everybody else is doing <laughs> jet fuel and you're, and you're a train, you know, and you're just consistent, it's going to be, di- it's going to make you a lot more competitive in your marketplace, um, because everybody else is doing something very different. And that's, and that's honestly why we, why with our clients, we see that year over year growth because they're, they're thinking about the way they're generating leads different and, their competitors haven't caught on to that yet. They've wondered <laughs> what's going on here. Um, but typically as marketers, we tend to be in our own little lane and we're not thinking about, you know, new ways of doing things always or what other people are doing or like what's at the forefront. And so um, just as much as it is like carving, carving, carving stuff out of your budget, it's more what's my mindset toward the way that I'm approaching solving this problem. Um, so I, I don't know. I just wanted to, cause I, I've seen that no, with people. Good. It's like, you know what I mean? It's like, yeah, no, why is this difficult? But it is difficult. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it feels risky. It feels, um, you, you know, you get, you, a lot of times you're selling everybody within your organization on this mindset as well. And most people yeah, want yeah. immediate now, but right. just like, uh, it's like, I, you know, and that's why I love this, this concept because it allows as a marketer, it allows you to maximize, you know, your marketing dollars without, increasing your budget and your spend. And, you know, as ad prices continue to rise, um, as you said, more competitors are getting into the space, you know, that just drives up the cost of ads. And there's a lot of things Google's doing to try to enforce more broad match, you know, ads and things like that, which is fine. It exposes you to more people, but it also exposes you to a lot more, um, people that aren't really looking for what you're offering. And so as you do those things, you get kind of more junk in and that brings, you know, it it continues to uh, raise the cost per lead and those types of things. And so people are getting squeezed, you know, from all directions and and they're really looking for a way to compete. And this is a great way to compete and dominate, you know, in each of your local markets so that you're there organically. And then you can more strategically use those ads and ads are really important. There's also, you know, as you localize more of your marketing content, we found that it also improves performance of your digital ads as well. It's kind of an auxiliary benefit, but if you're sending people to a landing page that is really focused on that specific service and that specific market, which, you know, comes along for the ride with uh, what we do with all the localization that we do, we're seeing anywhere from 30 to 50% improvement in conversion rates as well, because people, again, they know, Hey, I'm working with a local company. These guys are down the street versus some big national brand where they feel like they're just a number. So all those things like together, that's why, you know, localizing your marketing. Um, most organizations really want to get more local in their marketing because they see that it's working. It's delivering better results. And this is a great way to do that and to get better organic visibility, which is earned, it's more trusted, and it it really allows you to grow as an organization in a very cost-effective way that doesn't go away when your ad budget, you know, runs out. So Yeah, it's like it's so interesting because it's so easy to overcomplicate. Like it's so easy to overcomplicate. But when you think about like, um, you know, my girlfriend, she just or she just had a plumber problem. And what's the thing that what's the thing that's quickly becoming realized to me is I don't want to feel like I'm working with some national office somewhere. Like I want to get that solved as quickly as possible. So in my mind, I'm thinking like if they're local, (laughs) I'm going to be able to get them there like that and, you know, get my problem solved, get this sewer stuff out of my basement and, you know, whatever. And so all those little micro decisions go into that. And so something as simple as an organic listing may seem to a lot of people like not that big of a deal or why would I put my resources into that when I can just buy a lead, um, you know, through digital ads, which 
I'm not saying that that's a wrong thing to do or that that doesn't work because obviously it does. But why would you not also want to try to quickly capture uh, the people who understand, you know, are understanding those trust signals and like sending those, you know, looking for that trust, that trust signal. Um, so, yeah, for sure. If you can get a good balance, you know, digital ads are great. We, we need to leverage those and, and we manage digital ads for, for clients in a locally relevant way. But you can't get away from the fact that organic just produces uh, the same type of visibility and quality of leads at a fraction of the cost. And so, you know, just being a smart marketer, you want to maximize your marketing dollars. And if you can reach 10 times the people with the same cost, you know, you know, it's a great strategy to, to implement. And, and really, you know, historically, the reason people haven't done it is because of the things that we've talked about. It's too hard. It would require too many people. Um, you know, I don't have the right strategy. I'm busy. You know, this is complex. And what we've tried to do is take all of that out of it, make it a turnkey, leverage your existing assets and do it in a way that gives you added value without more work and, you know, additional cost that you're not getting a return on. So when you solve those problems, it, it just makes, you know, perfect sense. Without the technology to do it, you know, now it becomes, it's a lot murkier. You know, the math changes a lot because the expense, the hassle, the time it takes to do it, the unknowns, you know, that all becomes major factors in your decision. But when you can look at, you know, an approach that makes it easy, turnkey, proven, you know, then, you know, it changes the math significantly. And now it's like, okay, now this is attainable. And so it's really just understanding what's out there, how the strategy works, what the upside is, and how you can fit that into your overall, you know, marketing mix in, in an effective way to really take your local marketing to the next level. Well, that is going to be it for this episode of the Multilocation Marketing Show. That was the digital carve-out method. Uh, thanks, Matt, for kind of walking us through that. And yeah, just, um, you know, we'll have, I think we're actually going to have a blog post on this and we'll link that in the show notes as well. Um, so you guys can see the steps that we talked about today. Um, but thank you everyone for joining and yeah, we'll see you on the next episode.